Hi everyone, how are you? Doing good? Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so uh, this video I want to discuss on uh, module 4, Programs and Applications. Okay, so make sure you watch every part of this video to cover uh, all the subtopic in this chapter. Okay, now let's start. Okay, so we are back to our lecture. So this time uh, I want to discuss on module 4 of programs, apps, productivity, graphics, security, and tools. And I'm still using the same textbook as you can see. This graphic computers 2018. Okay. So please use earphones or earbuds for better audio. Okay, now let's look at the objective of the uh, lecture for today. So, first of all, I want to discuss in terms of the general categories of programs and apps. I also want to discuss on how an operating system interacts with application and hardware. Next, I will differentiate among the ways you can acquire programs and apps. And then I will close this session with identification the key features of productivity applications okay now let's start with the first slide a program or software consists of a series of related instructions organized for a common purpose that tells the computer what tasks to perform and how to perform them an application or app sometimes called application software consists of a programs designed to make users more productive and or to assist them with personal tasks. An operating system is a set of programs that coordinates all the activities among computer or mobile device hardware. Other programs, often called tools or utilities, enable you to perform a maintenance type tasks, usually related to managing devices, media, and programs used by computer and mobile devices. The operating systems and other tools are collectively known as system software because they consist of programs that control or maintain the operations of the computer and its devices. So as you can see in figure 1.1, users work with a variety of programs and apps, some of which are shown in this figure. Now let's go to the role of the operating system. So, operating system basically serves as the interface between the user, the applications, and other programs, and the computers or mobile devices hardware, as you can see in figure 4.2 here. Now, let's move to the interacting with programs and apps. The technologies that developers use to create apps often depends whether they will be installed on a user's device or accessed via a network. So you have a plenty of apps such as a native, cloud, web, and mobile web app. Native app is an app written for a specific platform and installed on a computer or mobile device. Examples include productivity applications, single player games, and a browser. Then we have a cloud app. A cloud app makes use of software and data that are not stored on your computer or mobile device. For example, include apps for accessing online social networks, web-based email services, and online calendars. Whereby a web app is a special type of cloud app that is accessed by visiting a website network in a browser. Then we have a mobile web app. It is a web app that runs on a mobile device. For example, include websites for shopping, banking, and online social networks access in a browser. Programs and apps are distributed in a variety of forms such as retail, custom, shareware, freeware, open source, and public domain. So, what are the differences between all these forms? Let's discuss it now. First, retail software. It is a mass-produced copyrighted software that meets the needs of a wide variety of users, not just a single user or company. Some retail software 
pre-installed on the new computers and mobile devices. You also can purchase a retail software from a local stores and on the web. Then we have custom software. This software performs a function specific to a business or industry. In this case, for example, the company may hire software developers to create specialized custom software. This custom software usually costs more than retail software. Next form is shareware. It is copyrighted software that is distributed at no cost for a trial period. To use a shareware program beyond that period, you send payment to the software developer or you might be billed automatically unless you cancel within a specified period of time. Then we have freeware, which is a copyrighted software provided at no cost by an individual or a company that retains all the right to the software. The word free in freeware indicates that the software has no charge. Open source software whereby is a software provided for use, modification and redistribution. This software may have restriction from the copyright holder regarding modification of the software's internal instructions and its redistribution. Open source software usually can be downloaded from a web server on the internet at no cost. There are two main advantages. First, a community of developers contribute enhancement to the software for all to use. And second one, customers can personalize the software to meet their needs. And last form will be public domain software where it has been donated for public use and has no copyright restrictions. Anyone can copy or redistribute public domain software to others at no cost. Okay, now let's continue with the productivity application. Productivity application can assist you in becoming more effective and efficient while performing daily activities at work, school, and home. With productivity applications, users often create, edit, format, save, and share projects. The projects include document, presentation, spreadsheets, notes, calendars, contact lists, budgets, drawings, and more. So these are the examples of the productive application, such as word processing, presentation, spreadsheet, database, note-taking, calendar, project management, accounting, personal finance, legal, tax preparation, document management, support services, as well as enterprise computing. So with productive application, users often can create a project, edit a project, format a project, save it, and as well as distribute the project. So we can uh, read the details on every single uh, activities in page 4-8 and 4-9 in module 4. Now let's continue with the first productivity application which is word processing. Word processing software is an application that allows users to create and manipulate documents containing text and sometimes graphics. People use a word processing software to develop documents such as letters, memos, reports and so on. Word processing software has many features to create professional and visually appealing documents. In fact, this software also allows users to incorporate graphics such as digital photos and clip art. With word processing software, you easily can modify the appearance of an image after inserting it into the document. It also allows you to define the size of the paper on which to print and to specify the margins. Word processing software typically includes tools to assist you with the writing processes, for example, a spelling checker, a grammar checker, a format checker, as well as a bibliography tool. The next productivity application is presentation software. It is an application that allows users to create visual aids for presentation to communicate ideas, messages, and other information to a group. The presentation can be viewed as slides that are displayed on a large monitor or on a projection screen from a computer or mobile device. Presentation software typically provides a variety of predefined presentation formats. It provides a variety of layouts for each slide and have tools for arranging text in various configurations as you can see in figure 4.6 now. Some presentation software offers a media search tool to help users locate online images or video. It also incorporates features such as checking spelling, formatting, researching, and creating web pages for existing slide shows. The third productivity application is spreadsheet. 
Spreadsheet software is an application that allows users to organize data in columns and rows and perform calculation on the data. These columns and rows collectively are called a worksheet. Most spreadsheet software has a basic features to help users create, edit, and format worksheets. Data is organized vertically in columns and horizontally in rows on each worksheet. Please refer figure 4.7. Then you have a database. A database is a collection of data organized in a manner that allows access, retrieval, and use of the data. So we need software, special software to perform that task. Then we have database software. It is an application that allows users to create, access, and manage a database. Using this software, you can add, change, and delete data in a database, sort and retrieve data from the database, and create forms and reports using the data in the database. Then you have note-taking software. It is an application that enables users to enter type text, handwritten comments, drawings, sketches, photos, and links anywhere on the page and then save the page as part of a notebook. Users also can include audio recordings. Some enable users to sync their notes to the cloud. Then you have calendar and contact management software. This software will help the user to organize calendar, keep track contacts, and share information with other users who can view it on their computers and mobile devices. This software provides a way for individuals and work groups to organize, find, view, and share appointment and contact information easily. Calendar and contact management applications enable users to synchronize information across all of your computers and mobile devices so that you will always have the latest version of any updated information. Please refer figure 4.10. So that's all for today for our first part of video in module 4. I will continue with the next part in the next video. So stay tuned with me. Bye.